We had this comment come in on our channel. In a horror movie, only the villain character matters. All the other characters are expendable. Most are going to die anyway. What's your reaction to that? Well, um, I disagree, I would say, with that. I think in a movie, every character matters. You know, you want to build good characters across the board. If you can build a good villain character, that's fantastic. Because a throwaway villain character is not good for your story. It's just a, a straight villain. You know, you want that villain to have motives. You want that villain to have some kind of connective element. Those always make the best villains. But you want a lead character to root for. And in a horror movie, you know, it's 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 somewhat of a Russian roulette. You don't know, who, hopefully you don't know who's going to get killed. I mean, there's definitely a lot of cliches in horror films. A lot of 80s cliches, which I always think is interesting. That even nowadays, like people still use 80s cliches instead of 90s or 2000 cliches, if that even exists. Um, 2000s was more about the, the torture porn element of horror with just uh, brutal violence and, and graphic uh, gore and whatnot. But I mean, every movie needs good characters. Totally. Uh, even horror movies. I mean, every movie. So you want to connect with someone. If you can connect with, if you connect the most with the villain, that's fine. You're connecting with someone. And maybe you think the villain's right. A lot of people watch the Avengers and like, oh, Thanos had a good point. It's like, you know, you want your villains to be dynamic. And so if you can make a horror villain that's dynamic, that's really impressive. Especially one that's, you know, like a Jason Voorhees who was done wrong. You know, he lost his life due to someone else's incompetence. He yearns for his mother who killed in his name. Like he he has all these different reasons why he's doing things. It's not like he just shows up and starts slashing people for no reason. Um, Michael Myers was one where they he had good reasons for a while, but now it's kind of just like a hack and slash kind of a thing. But when you can make your your villains dynamic is is awesome. So I don't necessarily think that every character is a throwaway character. There's definitely some low-budget movies that don't pay as much attention to that and just think, oh, if I follow this simple formula, then it'll be good because it's a horror movie, people die, there's blood, you're happy. And it's like, well, not always. And that's why there's a thousand of those that don't go anywhere or don't reach cult status because they're not good. Um, but, I mean, every movie needs good, solid characters all across the board. What are some of those classic 80s horror cliches? Not, not 90s or 2000s, but the 80s. Sure. What, what do we see the across 80s, the board? The 80s definitely brought us where it's like you have your very distinct characters. Here's your jock guy. Here's your sexy girl. Here's your nerdy guy. Here's this person has some kind of your stoner character or someone that does drugs, uh, which is really funny because I love, I really want to do a, a slasher movie with modern tropes where it's like, oh, here's your yoga instructor. Here's your, your, your vlogger. Uh, here's Airbnb your Airbnb host. Your Airbnb host. Yeah. Here's your <laughs> Minecraft beta tester or something. Uh, but you all, you have those consistent characters. Whereas nowadays those, while people still sort of fit those types in reality, it's, it's so much more across the board. There's not just a football player. You know, you might have a football player that loves playing Dungeons and Dragons. You might have a nerdy guy who just made a million dollars with his crypto. I mean, there's there's so many different avenues nowadays that it's kind of interesting that people really focused on those types of tropes. And uh, like they made a movie uh, like Scream, which ironically Scream that came out in 1996 from Wes Craven, that was the movie that made me go into filmmaking because it talks about all these tropes and it pulls back the curtain on the thought process that goes into movie making. And I had never really thought about it until then. That really opened my eyes to be like, oh, there is a lot more to movies than just stuff happening. Like these, all these decisions are made really specifically. And so with 80s tropes, it's like, oh no, you know, this is gonna happen and that caused you to die. A big thing was the AIDS epidemic. So in Halloween and Friday the 13th, they're like, oh, if you have sex, you get killed. Because at the time, people were dying from AIDS. Uh -huh. And that was a really big fear in the country. And so they took advantage of that to be like, look, this is scary. You know, nowadays it'd be like, oh, no, this, this one's going to lose his 401k. It's like, oh, that like, terrify you, you know. Oh, Social Security is not going to be here anymore, you know. <laughs> or you lost, you lost all your Bitcoin. You lost your Bitcoin drive. You know? <laughs> Something like that. Um, what about 90s tropes? What about 90s horror 90s ended up reimagining the 80s tropes and making all of the, the characters very intelligent. You know, Scream kind of kick-started 
that genre of filmmaking. Usually every decade in horror, there's a movie that kind of kickstarts and reinvigorates the franchises. In the 90s, Scream did that. And so then all of a sudden you had new slasher movies like I know you did last summer, Urban Legend, where they're like, there's a killer, but all of our kids are, are totally smart. They're on computers, they have cell phones, like they're totally hip with the world around them. They make references to pop culture. You know, these are these kids are smarter now than they were back then where they're just like, hey, let's go smoke up behind the barn. <laughs> oh no, he's got a machete. You know, that's kind of how the 80s were. Where in the 90s, everyone's smarter. So they're all they're all running better because they were they're more aware, self-aware. And then in the 2000s, you get into the Saw movies and Hostel, where it's just about brutalizing people and just graphic torture, which I was never really into because I'm like, it's boring. You know, that's boring. That's not smart. It's just kind of, oh no, this person's stuck in a trap, and it's like, all right. Um, nowadays, I don't, I don't even know. Oh, Paranormal Activity and Blair Witch Project was a huge boost too in found footage horror because people were kind of like, oh man, they made Blair Witch Project for $60,000 and they sold it for a million dollars. I can make a million dollars by running around with a camera in the woods. And so then all of a sudden you get a thousand of those kind of movies and a lot of them are not done well. I mean, that that's a total needle in a haystack movie. Nobody could have bet that that movie would make so much money and be as impactful as it was. And it is scary like because they pitched it as being real. And I remember driving two and a half hours three days in a row to the nearest theater playing it in 1999 because I and I took friends the next two days so I'm like you have to watch this movie it's incredible it's going to blow your mind and it's and you watch it nowadays and I still think it's impactful like I still get you know jump in it and get nervous and, and anxiety because it's just such a real visceral experience and then the rise in reality of television after that I mean you suddenly get Survivor and all these other reality shows and that now that's a huge boom market because the studios first off are like oh this is really cheap we don't have to put anything in visual effects we don't have to pay all these people like there's people running around with a camera this is fantastic we'll make a ton of money and they do and that's why we have like a hundred reality shows now um, but horror constantly reinvents itself because eventually themes outstay their welcome and someone figures out a new way to tell a new story and the great thing about horror is that the entire world can relate to it. Every single person dies. Every single one of us on the planet. So everyone on earth can relate to trying to stay alive because we all have to. You look at like an American comedy. Like I remember when American Pie came out and they were like, oh, they sold this movie overseas for nothing. It's like, well, yeah, because there's probably a lot of communities in Africa that aren't worried about getting some in high school. <laughs> like they can't relate to that. It's not, it doesn't connect as well. But you know, horror sci-fi action sci-fi every single one of us has stars over our head it connects us all and action like everyone wants that that big ex, you know explosions and escapes and everything so there are a lot more connectivity to those types of movies than there are for dramas or comedies and things like that how do you think some of the Stephen King films have evolved over the decades because a lot of them had this broader message you know, they yep. weren't just scares and, and different, you know, some of them were gory, obviously, but there was usually a broader message. Yeah. Stephen King's stories, Stephen King's a fantastic writer. I mean, his books are so visceral and so deep and so thick. My wife's a huge fan of Stephen King's. We have a ton of his books. And the movies of Stephen King started really, really strong. You have movies like Carrie and The Shining. Uh, I love Christine, personally. There's... A bunch of those movies that came out, Pet Cemetery, I really enjoyed. Um, and then eventually they started turning them into television. And I think that's when it started getting watered down. We're like, we can make a six hour miniseries based on the Stephen King book, but it has to be rated PG. And so then it's kind of like, other than It, uh, the original It, which was still very impactful, the other ones start getting a little more watered down and they're not. It's all made for television, so you can't really keep all the themes with it. And it's like, oh, here's the Tommyknockers and the Langoliers. And all of a sudden, you're like, I don't, Rose Red. And you kind of lose that after a while. And nowadays, they started, like, they brought it back and they remade it, which I really, really enjoyed because they made it more of a, a fun, fun movie. It's still scary, but it's a lot of fun to watch. Um, they made his movie Cell, which didn't do very well. I mean, a lot of his stories are very hit or miss with film. You know, a lot of them are internal. 
a lot of internal things happening in the characters' heads, and it's really difficult to translate that into a movie. I think the last one was Doctor Sleep, the sequel to The Shining, and I thought they did a really, really good job in it, but it's just not, it's not ever going to be that original movie, especially at the time period when that came out. It was such more, much more of an impact than if you had brought it out today, I think. What was the one where it was about a tabloid journalist? The Dark Half. Okay, where he had, he flies, and then he flies. Oh, the Night Flyer. Yeah, the Night Flyer. Yeah, he's a vampire. Right, but then he, he there's a, well, I don't want to give it away, but then there's like this other ominous pilot, and that the two worlds collide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's the Night Flyer. Okay. He has this little Cessna that he like yes. goes around mm -hmm. and they keep finding. And he's bitter, and yeah. he's in these bars, and he's just writing yeah. this horrible tabloid stuff, but. Yeah. He stumbles upon a, a crime and yeah. Okay. That was and there's a lot of them. I mean, the mist is really well done. There's a lot of them that are well done. There's a lot of them that are like they just remade Pet Cemetery, which I like the original one better. Um, the new It I really enjoyed though. I did enjoy that a lot. And there's just so many. Gerald's Game was good. Netflix did that one. That was new and good. Um, but I feel like it's it's kind of hit or miss with his stuff because the books are so involved and so mental that it's hard to kind of portray that as easily.